what is up ds3 tv we are back watching another video this is sam Monella, dead body hijinks um we have not watched this one on the channel i don't think um maybe on the last channel we did but i don't remember watching this on the channel so we're gonna go and watch this video and um yeah so let's get into it and Also subscribe to the channel, want to get a thousand subscribers by Valentine's Day. And also, um, yeah, comment videos down, that, down in the comment section below that you want me to watch. But uh, remind, remember, I cannot watch anything that's from like, like a big corporation or anything, like, or TV stuff. Like, can't watch anything from Vox. That's, a, that's one I've seen uh, recently that somebody wanted me to do videos on. I can't do that um, because... Vox is known to not really like creators. Um, if you're, you know, if you have uh, seen anything from um, PewDiePie, so yeah, they really don't care for creators at all. Uh, at at all, they actually actively hate us. So yeah. Um, but besides that point, let's get into the video and play. sponsoring this video. <laughs> Hey kids, whether you're a precocious young lad down by the swimming hole or a grizzled crime scene investigator, everybody's got some interest in dead bodies. Yes, from Weekend at Bernie's to Weekend at Bernie's 2 to Weekend at Bernie's 3 revelations, <laughs> stories about wayward corpses have certainly carved their niche in today's media. So, I thought I'd spin a few yarns about some real life people who were kept out far past their expiration date. Our first tale follows one Elmer McCurdy. He was an outlaw during the twilight days of the Wild West. Thanks to his former life as a miner, McCurdy acted as the demolitions expert to his little posse, using nitroglycerin basically any time he had the faintest excuse to do so. Except, he was kind of a moron, so it didn't usually go quite as planned. Gotta say, after peanut butter and chocolate, my favorite combination of two things is probably gross incompetence and high explosives. Example, yeah. in March of 1911, McCurdy's band of rabble-rousers found out that $4,000 <laughs> were in a safe in an approaching train. They managed to stop the entire locomotive Oh my gosh, they said, what does a train, what does a train look like? I don't think it looks like that. That looks like Thomas the Train on, on meth. <laughs> what is going on here? I don't even know how you do that. Break in, hold everyone on board hostage, and locate the safe. McCurdy steps up to play, right? Gotta blast the thing open. Except, I guess the excitement kind of got to him, because he ended up using, like, way too much nitroglycerin, ah. like, inordinate amounts. Ended up completely destroying the safe and its contents, and what few silver coins they made out with were literally melted to the frame of the safe and had to be peeled off. Anyway, he died in a shootout with police later that year, and the undertaker at the funeral home he was sent to couldn't find any necks of kin on a kind of McCurdy being a rambling low-life varmint, so he just embalmed the hell out of him and said, Hey, boys and girls, want to see a dead criminal? Only one <laughs> shot. <laughs> hey, boys and girls, want to see a dead criminal? <laughs> it's time. I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's a pretty interesting... <laughs> that's a pretty interesting thing to think about after you embalm someone. But, yeah. Pretty interesting. Tiny nickel. And since Live Leak wasn't around at the time, there weren't many places a kid could go to stare at a corpse for a while if he or she so desired. So it actually became a pretty popular attraction. Visitors would pay their dues by physically slipping the coin into the man's mouth, and the creepy ass undertaker would come fish him out later, probably with bare hands all slowly and sensual like. A few years passed when a couple of guys showed up claiming to be McCurdy's brothers with a note from the local sheriff to back it up. They told the undertaker they had permission to go bury McCurdy, so he reluctantly relinquished the body to the men. Except, these guys weren't his brothers. They were just a couple of crusty freaking carnies. They ah. shipped the body off to Kansas to become an attraction in the traveling show. From here, McCurdy traded hands a few more times. At one point, he was exploited for this one guy's film about narcotics. It was like, yeah, this pill-popping degenerate got shot while trying to rob a pharmacy for more dope the other day. The body was super old by then, so people were like, wait, why is he all desiccated and flaky and gross? He just goes, yep, that's what happens when you do drugs, kids. Your fucking skin falls off. 
<laughs> not not that you could have just gotten an old dead body. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stay above the influence. At some point in his journey, he ended up getting coated in wax and paint to look a little less rotty before ending up in a warehouse in 1949. Here's the thing, he was in there alongside some actual wax figures, and after spending 19 years in storage, nobody knew he was a real corpse anymore. So he ended up getting sold in 1968 as a mannequin to one Spoony Singh, owner of the wow. Hollywood Wax Museum. He tried to lend the guy out a couple times during his stay, but people found him too gross or unrealistic looking for whatever purposes they had in mind. So he ended up getting- What do you mean unreal- <laughs> Can't be more unrealistic, it's a dead body. What do you mean unrealistic? sold again and used as a prop of a hanged man at the Pike Amusement Zone in their fun house ride, with zero knowledge that he was an actual dead criminal. It wasn't until 1976, 65 years after his death, that an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man was being filmed at the complex, and a stagehand tried to move the prop around, only to have its arm break off in his hand. He was like, ugh, lousy stiff. Wait a minute, that's curious. This mannequin's got human flesh and bones inside of it. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The altop. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> she confirmed what everyone present at the time suspected. By this point, the body was so dried out and stale that it only weighed 50 pounds. Which makes me think, we should start a radical new fad diet where we just get people to mummify parts of their body. Like, Jenny, guess what? I just lost 30 pounds in 5 days. Wow, holy heck, how'd you do that? They call it the Egyptian cleanse. Anyway, with that, McCurdy was finally laid to rest back in his homeland of Oklahoma, and that film crew's lives were never the same again. Flashback to late 18th century, Baloney. there lived a physician by the name of Luigi Galvani. This guy was a big deal. He's the dude who discovered that, hey, animals got electricity in them. And his legacy okay. still survives today in words like galvanize. One of his most famous experiments was the one where he used static electricity to make frog legs twitch on command. Around these parts, we call that the French salute. <laughs> 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 Stereotypes funny. Well, in 1803, his nephew, Giovanni Aldini, said, Hey, that's pretty nifty and all, but uh, what if we tried it on people? So the city of London was okay. like, hey, now you're thinking with portals. One freshly executed criminal coming up. Aldini gathered a crowd and a... London really just gave up a criminal a person that easy? <laughs> Wow, okay. Apply two diodes to the corpse's head, causing his face to scrunch up and one eye to flick open. Aldini was a showman though, he wanted some real action. So he then put the current through opposite points in the body, which made the whole thing flail around like Pinocchio in heat. Now today we know he was just exciting the dead muscles, right? But the people yeah. who were watching had no idea what was going on. So they were like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a fucking necromancer. Quick, go get grandma, maybe we can get in the will after all. Fun fact, this experiment actually ended up serving as inspiration for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which makes me wonder what other famous novels were based on real life events. Was a white whale ever pursued by a vengeful sea captain? Was there actually a mentally <laughs> actually said yes. <laughs> handicapped migrant worker who liked hugging rabbits to death? Was there ever a human soul as profoundly asinine and willfully ignorant as Amelia Bedelia? God, I hate her glassy-eyed face so fucking much. I just want to mash it into a running waffle maker. Be like, ha, huh, isn't that ironic? Grab her by her vacant fucking head, throw her out of a 747 and say, Hey, why didn't you shoot yourself when you had the chance? Get it! He, is, he, is, he has very strong feelings about Amelia, Amelia Bodelia. <laughs> Anyway, one thing we learned today is the importance of reputability. And just as you wouldn't want some dirty carnies jacking your stiff, phrasing, you certainly wouldn't want the same fate to befall your valuable <laughs> online information. That's what- I mean, you know, that's, that's, that is true. Um, so yeah, talk to you guys in the next video. Um, thank you guys for watching this with me. And, uh, subscribe to the channel. Want to get that subscribers by Valentine's Day. And talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.